Trump's got to pick a VP. Mm. Biden doesn't have to do that because, unfortunately, he has Kamala Harris. <laughs> that ship has sank already. That ship yeah. is already, it's the Ocean <laughs> Gates tragedy just right, <laughs> happening right in front of us on a daily basis with Kamala Harris. But uh, everyone's speculating. Mm-hmm. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be sociopathic dog killer Christy Nome? Mm. Is it going to be Manchurian candidate Tim Scott? Is it going to be a billionaire Bond villain? Uh, what's that guy's name? Burn Gardner? D- Doug Burgum. Burgum. I saw him this weekend saying what a wonderful, wonderful man Trump was. And yeah. what a wonderful world it is, apparently, <laughs> as well, right? So uh, they're all making TV appearances. Yeah. They're just all going around, and they're all talking about how great Donald Trump is because they really, really want that job. And a lot of them are failing miserably at this. I would say that Tim Scott and Christy Nome probably are the are the highlight of how awful these people are at media, being that they are caught between two worlds. There is the world in which you can be an effective politician and an effective communicator. Right. And then there's the world where you have to please Donald Trump. Okay. And when you are <laughs> right in the middle of that, you're going to end up looking like a fool. So should we start with Christy Nome? Because she was asked about um, her book again, yeah. her big old book that's coming out, the one where she talks about killing a dog. And in that book, there's a bit of a, uh, a tall tale, let us just say. Mm-hmm. There's a bit of the old... Uh, Lie, as the kids like to call it. When she was on the, I think it was the Foreign Relations Committee, when she served in Congress before being governor. Correct. She met with numerous world leaders. She's going to give herself her international diplomacy, international governance, you know, bona fides there. Mm -hmm. And she talks about meeting uh, Kim Jong-un in the book. Correct. Right. And she was asked about that. because She was asked about it as to whether or not that actually happened. And her answer is... It's kind of like when the sixth grader is running for class president yeah. <laughs> and he gets asked, so you said that we were going to have free chocolate milk during lunch. How are you going to accomplish that? And then the sixth grader realizes that they have no control over I have no way to do that. <laughs> no financial <laughs> policies whatsoever. Laura, can we play this clip? This is just so embarrassing for somebody Person, who's supposed to be a good politician. Um, let's talk first, but we want to talk about a lot of sure. topics that you address in the book. But yeah. the book is called No Going Back, but it mm-hmm. sounds like the publisher, Center Street, is going back on a couple of the details mm-hmm. in the book. Oh, I don't believe so. Specifically, when you write in the book, I remember when I met with North, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, I'm sure he underestimated me. That, as I understand, is now being removed from the book at your request. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I became aware of that. We changed the content and uh, the future editions will be adjusted. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that. I've met with many, many world leaders. I've traveled around the world. Uh, I should not have put that anecdote in the book. And uh, at my request, they have that specific it. How- didn't pa- Pause it really quick. She says, I should not have put that anecdote in the book. But did she actually meet with the man, right? That's the thing that we wanted. Did you actually meet and talk to the leader of an open-air prison, right? I right, mean, that's really right. what the question is. And she said, oh, I shouldn't have put that. Does, any, does anybody actually know if she physically has ever been in the same room with the same guy? I read that it was confirmed she had never okay. met with Kim Jong-un. Right. Ever. Okay. And, and, and when she was reading the audio version of her book in her own voice— Yes. Did she think that might have been a good time to take it out of the book? Yeah. Not not when you're called out by the world news yeah. that you never, and it's confirmed by congressional record that you never met with Kim Jong-un. God, pesky things, right? Those congressional Those records and oh. flight logs. Can we go back to it, Laura? Because this is just such awful politicking. How, I'm saying that I'm not talking about that meeting. I'm not talking about my meetings with world leaders. But you uh, there's do some talk that about are in meetings the book. with world leaders. There's some that are in the book, and then there's some that's not in the book. Many but of them actually. why are there two specific and... mentions of meeting Kim Jong Un and talking about him, and <laughs> a specific memory? I'm sure he underestimated <laughs> me, having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. Did you tell your ghostwriter to you write? No, I've specifically have worked on policy for over 30 years. And over that time, I have traveled around the world, and I have met with leaders around the world. Dang. Uh, Okay, pause it really quick. I will not answer that question. And I will not answer that (laughs) question. Dang, dude. Like, you just got caught. The the, the best thing she could have possibly done is trying to work it back is, Mm -hmm. you know, I was... I was working on my non or my fiction book right mm, at the right. same time as I was <laughs> yeah, yeah. as I was working on this and in my in my novel that I've been working on it it's it stars a or features a woman who's 
Uh, she's a crime fighter, but also a diplomat. <laughs> and she goes to meet Kim Jong Un. Yeah. And her name just so happens to be Chrissy Nome in, right, in the right. story. And so I got my manuscripts. Well, cr- what happened is my dog Cricket. Remember the one that I shot? <laughs> I accidentally. I he ran in and he mixed up my manuscripts. Right. And right? that page got in with the fiction that page for the not. Yeah. Got in with the actual write up. Caught that earlier. Of what I actually <laughs> did, and it was just incredibly. It, it's, again, that's one of the reasons why I had to shoot him because he was just mixing up my manuscripts. That would be slightly more feasible than the nonsense that she has right here. Can we wrap this up, Laura? Is that all about? Is that about it? She had to. Say, okay, yeah. So Tim Scott, he was asked about. He's another one that people are pitching as the potential yeah. VP for uh, Donald Trump, and he was asked about you know, free and fair elections mm-hmm. and if Donald Trump loses in twenty twenty four. Will he accept the results of this elect? It's a very easy question yeah. to answer, and he has a very hard time with it. Here's what that sounded like. So I'm asking you as a potential VP nominee, will you accept to commit to the election results in this election cycle, no matter who wins? Just simply yes or no. I expect, I expect President Trump to win the next election. Listen, I'm not going to ask you, answer your hypothetical question when, in fact, I believe the American people are speaking today on the results of the election. And the, if, it continue, if it continues for the next six months, we find ourselves in a great position where we get back to another century of American prosperity. Okay, pause it really quick. That is a semantically loaded word salad that mm-hmm. is indecipherable. Sure. I believe the American people are speaking today about election, and we, I believe that there will be a century of prop. Like, what the what is he talking about, right? It's a very simple question. Will you accept the results of the election? Now, if he wanted to be really specific about it, he could say, given all of the changes that have been made at the federal and the state level as re- in regards to election integrity, I absolutely will barring any inconsistencies or the outcome of any potential election challenges that sh- end up in court. That's right? a great answer if you're speaking to America, but if you're speaking to Donald Trump. He's speaking to if Trump. You're an audience of one in this interview. She asked, if we keep going, I think she asks again and again and again. Six times I think he had to dodge this question. Yeah, that's rough for him. It's, like, it's like having your feet shot at in a yeah, Bugs exactly. Bunny cartoon. Exactly. Dance for me, spider. Dance, <laughs> right? Let's go back to the clip, Laura. Let's, <laughs> let's wrap this up, right? I'm not going to make it an issue. Well, Senator, will you commit to accepting the election results of 2024? Bottom line. Uh, well, uh, at the end of the day, the 47th president of the United States will be President Donald Trump, and I'm excited to give back Dang. to low inflation, let it play, let it play low for employment. Wait, wait, Senator, yes years. or no? Yes or no? Will you accept the election results of 2024 no matter who wins? That is my statement. <laughs> but, but is it just yes or no, will you accept the election results of 2024? I I look forward to President Trump being the 47th president. Kristen, you can ask him multiple but times. But Senator, just a yes or no answer. The so the American people the, the American people will make the decision. But I don't hear you committing. For president Trump, that's that clear. I don't hear you committing not, to the election see, results. Here, here's the challenge. Will you commit this, to accepting is, the election this is results? Why so many. This is why so many Americans believe that NBC is an extension of the Democrat Party. At the end of the day... (laughs) Okay, hold on. Pause it really quick. Like, okay, so at the end of the day, Tim Scott, a simple yes or no answer. You can say no, and quite frankly, if he said no, that would likely be much more palatable to MAGA people. It it, it probably would. If he just said flat out no. Now, here's how you know that Tim Scott is not a true believer, because if, if he was a true believer, he would be saying... Absolutely not, because in 2020, we know X, Y, and Z, right? right? He'd go all Mike Lindell, and he'd be drooling all over his pillow and (laughs) smoking crack. And one of the things that I don't think that that people fully understand, just in regards to political discourse, is that if you are a true believer— You'll say it to everybody all of the time, regardless of what room you're in. Right? Uh, Unflappable. Uh, Completely. Tim Scott has basically the moral fortitude of like a noodle that's been in a pot for too long. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Just completely starting to collapse under the pressure of this. And because he's auditioning for the role of VP, it puts him in that position of basically looking like a complete and total fool because he's not actually speaking to the American people. He's speaking to Donald Trump. Audience of one, babe. And he doesn't get any better as she goes on for the fifth or seventh or tenth time. Yeah, that's too bad.